In this video, I'll refinish and repair this little cabinet. Probably the worst damage is this crack in the side that somebody tried to fix with staples and duct tape on the inside. It has a mystery hole in the side. I'm not sure what the purpose of that would have been. The bottom panel has come apart at one of the glue joints, so that will need to be reglued. I found this in a thrift store. The inside smelled a little bit like tobacco, and I think this is a smoking cabinet where you would keep your cigars and tobacco and things. The Garfield mug is just to give you an idea of the size of the cabinet. It's pretty small, which I like. It's easy to fit into any room. I began by repairing the crack with the staples in it. First thing I did was to remove the door, and this would give me better access to the crack. Once the door was off, then I took the tape off and then took the staples out. And then I could get a closer look at it. And you can see here, at the top of the crack, there's a dowel hole for the dowel that connects the side to the top. So that may have been where the crack started. It's possible that that hole created a weak spot. And then from years of the door opening and closing, it put a lot of stress on the side and then it cracked. And then I removed the leg assembly and that was just screwed on. Then I could get a closer look at the boards on the bottom that were loose. And I could see that the bottom was made up of three pieces and the split occurred right at the seam between two of the pieces. So the glue joint probably just gave out. Most of the joints on this piece were loose, so I just went and took apart the whole thing, and then I could re-glue everything that needed to be re-glued. It came apart pretty easily, except for the back joint, where the board in the back was glued into a slot on the bottom and the top. So I used a heat gun to try and soften that glue a bit so I could get it apart. And I eventually got it apart. There was a small sliver of wood that came off the top and stuck to the back panel when I took it off, but that was an easy fix. I just glued it back on. I also took apart the base. All those joints were loose as well. It came apart easily. Next, I glued the bottom panel back together. And in the process of taking this all apart, the other glue joint between the second and third
pieces also came loose. So now I had three pieces to glue back together. I also glue this little piece back on. For the crack in the side that had the staples in it, I used a syringe to shoot some glue into the crack and then clamped it up. For this hole in the side, I decided to use wood filler. So I just put a little super glue in there and then put a piece of a toothpick in to provide a backer for the wood filler. And then applied the filler. With those repairs done, then I could scrape off the old finish. I used a paint scraper for this. It was really thin and came off easily. On these grooves, I used a utility knife blade and just scraped off most of the finish with that. And anything that was left, I got with sandpaper. One of the legs had a small chunk missing, so I rebuilt this with some epoxy putty. This is a two-part epoxy. You just slice off enough 
for whatever job you're doing and mix the two parts together and then it's ready to use. So I just pressed it into the area being repaired. and shaped it as best as I could. Once it had dried, then I fine-tuned it with some sandpaper. The cabinet had a veneer on it, and it wasn't a very attractive veneer. I think it may have been poplar or something like that. Didn't really have much of a grain pattern or even a nice consistent color. So I decided to put some new walnut veneer over it. Before I put the veneer on, I did seal it with some shellac. Once the shellac dried, I sanded it lightly with some 320 sandpaper. The veneer that I chose for this had a peel and stick backing. So you just peeled off the paper from the back and then carefully placed it onto the piece. And I left a little bit of overhang on all sides. This is a pressure sensitive adhesive, so you have to make sure you apply enough pressure to get it good and stuck to the surface. This is the door that I'm working on, and on this piece, I used a utility knife to trim the excess veneer off. And this works well when you're going with the grain, like I'm doing here. But when you have to go across the grain, it can be a little trickier, and sometimes it can result in some tear out in the veneer. So I got a piece of a 2x4 and used that as a backer to try to prevent any tear out in the veneer. Another way to trim this veneer is with a router, and that usually works better, especially when you're going across the grain. This is one of the side pieces, and this was a little trickier because the front edge and the back edge are both carved, so they weren't going to get any veneer. So I just brought the veneer close to the front edge with a little bit of overhang.
I trim the excess veneer from the front and back sides with the knife. And again, this was going with the grain, so it worked well. But when I had to do the top and bottom, which is going across the grain, I used a router. And this gave me a cleaner cut. But I did have to avoid the dowels. I had to go back after the router with a straight edge and cut off those little bits of veneer over the dowel. This is the bottom panel of the cabinet. So this surface that we're looking at is the interior of the cabinet and it's got the slot for the back panel and holes for dowels for the sides. I decided to just veneer right over those. And then I went back later and cut those parts out. For the edge of the top and the bottom of the cabinet, I used some walnut iron-on edge banding. You just heat it up with an iron and it sticks itself to the wood. To trim the excess edge banding, I used a utility knife blade. Or a chisel.
and then I could glue it all back together. I first did a dry fit just to make sure everything still fit together. I put some tape around the joints just to help keep any glue squeeze out off of the new veneer. And then I glued it up. After sanding everything with some 180 grit sandpaper, then I could apply the stain. I'm using an oil liquid stain for this one. This is a walnut stain by Barathane. And it may seem redundant to put walnut stain on walnut veneer, but I find sometimes that the color of new walnut is a little bit pale for my taste. I usually prefer the look of older walnut that tends to get a nice warm amberish color to it. Whereas a lot of the new walnut that I see is more of a pale brown or even purple. So the stain just warms it up a little bit. I waited to glue the leg assembly back together until after I stained the top cabinet part. And I glued the assembly back together while it was screwed to the cabinet part. I did this because there wasn't a lot of precision in these joints. There was some slop in them. So I wanted to make sure that it would go back together in whatever shape it needed to be to be able to screw back into the top the way it originally was. And then I applied stain to the legs. I used the same stain on the legs as I did the top. And I didn't put any of the walnut veneer on the legs. 
even without the walnut veneer, it was a pretty good match to the top. For the top coat, I sprayed on some clear satin lacquer. Once the lacquer was dry, then I buffed it with some fine steel wool and wax. Then I could put the door back on. And here it is, all finished. Thanks for watching.